We'll start with the most recent paintings. And these are painted in Cornwall at Newlyn, where I have a studio, that overlooks the harbour. Rose, I understand that this is the earliest painting we have at the North Light Gallery. Can you tell me a bit about it and when it was painted? Yes, it was painted when I was first at Beckingham Art School and I decided to go into the painting school and um, I just was much more interested, uh, almost instinctively, in the space in this painting rather than colour. It's almost like a, just a, a very coloured drawing, but I've always uh, referred back to it and I still love the use of screens in my painting. This one's called The Carpet, our 16th wedding anniversary. We've been married for quite a number of years, things have calmed down, we've travelled a bit, we've been to Japan, we've bought Mary a kimono. I've been on a trip to Japan without her. I've brought back a Mikimoto pearl from a, a, a boutique in downtown Tokyo, and I'm bringing it back as a, as a, as a almost like a sort of a gift of adoration. Um, you know, we're, we're grown ups now. We're not punk kids anymore. Um, and there are different traditions here. There's Persian carpet, Japanese kimono, English cigar box. There are various traditions. The chandelier up here, of course, is French kitsch from the sort of you know from the 19th century. Uh, the painting is no longer rectangular. Uh, the picture is now concerned with memory, with the mind's eye. Now, as an artist, how do I codify that information? How do I put it all together as a picture maker? And these rock pictures. I jumped backwards a bit. I'm, I've been trying to go in terms of time. This one, which relates in a certain sense, was in 1961-62, when I'd left the Slade. I came down to St. Just, and I couldn't imagine how anyone could put the whole thing of the weather and the universe and the ocean and the moorland, and that huge scale onto a two-foot bit of hardboard. And so I spent a year painting these jugs. And this is one I liked, be, liked still, because it has the same sort of abstract forces as the rock ones. There's one here that uh, um, was a bit later, and actually I think it was more about the time of the rock painting there. It's not got the intensity of perhaps these ones. I think that's rather beautiful. I think these whites and greys, like the whites and greys here, and this foursome of four jars, and these very modest, meditative. People immediately say Morandi, and I suppose, I don't think I actually knew about Morandi then. But I'm sure a lot of different artists have the same preoccupations at different times. And it, I think one could say, perhaps, that that was Mary and I, and this was, you know, children, young children. But one never knows, and I think it's not too strange to say such things. Sometimes I do a more realistic still life. But that, the one we've just been talking about is the way I want to go. Um, this was um, a table, it's at home, and there's a screen, all the favourite objects, but um, although I've translated it into colour, it still has um, a recognisably, uh, the objects are, are more um, like they were. Sorry, that's not a very well explained. Although it does have a decorative element with the flattening of this, these plants. In the painting we looked at from Beckenham Art School, there was a screen in it. You say that screens are very important to you. I do, and now I've got about four screens at home. I love, I love the shapes that you can make from them, yeah. Do they give you another plane in the background? Yes, and um, also the lights and shades. Of, of them, you can. I mean, you can alter it. So, if you want a dark strip, yeah. 
and it still reads all right, I know. So I'm hanging on to sort of realistic things uh, slightly, yeah, still in these still life groups, yes. It's a starting point for me. Um, I have to use something in front of me to excite me enough to want to do it. Yeah. It's a picture of Mary in her workroom in London. So, do you stop with the ceiling? Do you stop with the floor? Do you stop, as you go this way, why don't you stop at the door? It's a logical stop. Stop at the door. So you come back this way, and you might as well go through the bay window, and you sort of kind of stop at the wall here. Then down here, you need a full stop down here. OK, the floor's flat. Because you're an artist, you have devices. You don't usually admit this in public but you've got little kind of what I call sneaky gimmicks that you kind of slip in, like, for instance, a dog on a cushion, in writing terms, is like a full stop and a semicolon all rolled into one. You kind of whip the dog in, and it's, it bounces the eye back up the picture. And the other earlier one was behind the whole business of starting painting, and this was thanks to Miss Diggle who was a beauty, who was the French and art teacher at my prep school at Amesbury near Hindhead. And um, she put this picture into uh, one of those national children's competitions when I was eight or nine. And one morning I woke up and all the popular papers had this, because it was just at the end of the Second World War, it had uh, this image on all the sort of front of the Daily Mail and the Express and the Daily Herald and all those papers, saying Jeremy H. Nine painted this picture. It was really just, you know, hyping up the, that particular exhibition. But it made me think, God, I can be an artist, and it's fun, and I love painting sailors or boats and the sea, and, and, um, and, Someone recently said, well, I was painting myself 40 years later, or 50 years later, or six years, nearly 60 years later, and maybe it is a sort of self-portrait. And that, perhaps, is quite a good point to end and to begin the survey. This construction, which is based on our garden at Little Everston in Cambridgeshire, is really the progress of two lovers, Mrs. Green and Mr. Green. They bring each other bunches of flowers and they progress because the great head here, lying down with its nose and its lips, shows you, the spectator, the way to go. It's looking this way. So you, we move through an enchanted garden an English garden with herbaceous borders and all sorts of wonderful flowers with lupins and poppies and roses and all sorts of other wonderful things. And you, you progress through this garden, this wonderful garden. It's, it's almost paradise. And as you come out to the top here, you know, a pilgrim's progress, we've done that bit, you know, heaven next stop, top of the picture, heaven's always up there and hell is down there, we're now up here, and the spectator is now has been on the journey. He's actually sort of down here, up here, through the Garden of Eden, through Paradise, and you're out, and you're actually into open country, and you're actually on the way to Paradise. And it's the, it's the, it's the unity of the two. You'll notice that this figure here, in fact, you're not quite certain what is man and what is woman. There is a union here. Of, of, of souls, the two things are sort of intertwined. You know, whose arm belongs to who, where are the legs, where are the breasts, where are the mouths, you know, whose face is who? You know, is, are there two eyes or four eyes, or has he been looking at Picasso, has he been drinking, or is it in fact it, the ultimate union of man and woman in heaven? Um, and I happen to believe that, you know, when I die, I'll go to heaven. Uh, I'll have made the journey. This whole exhibition, my whole life as an artist, is a journey. So I'm not being sort of po-faced when I'm talking about a pilgrim's progress. In a sense, I'm kind of, you know, 
I'm on my way past Canterbury and on to, you know, my, my zip code in the sky. And I'm gonna, I shall go there. And when I get there, all the old characters in the pictures that have predeceased me, my dad, who drank too much, who, you know, was a wonderful man, he'll be there. My stepfather, who had no personality but was nice and restful for my mum, he'll be there. My French grandpa, Casimir Dupont, my French granny, Jeanne Dupont, they'll be there waiting for me. And I'm not, I actually believe that because that's the way it is. That's my world. And in a way, this exhibition, in fact, is actually saying to people, in fact, I'm on my journey, you've happened to meet me on the road, and are you going my way? Are you? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to uh, thank you, Anthony Green, for coming to the Northlight Gallery, Huddersfield, on this occasion of your exhibition. This, I believe, is the largest exhibition of your work to be held in the United Kingdom and um, the exhibition carries on to July the 28th. So very many thanks. Thank you very much. It is a tremendous honour to have all my work in one place, top lit. It's, it's marvellous. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, I've been spoilt and I'm a, I'm a happy artist, thanks. <laughs>